Google Tag Manager is a free tag management system that allows you to manage and deploy marketing tags. Now these are snippets of code or as sometimes referred to as tracking pixels on your website or even your mobile app. They can do all of this without having to modify the code on your website. So it's super easy. Today we'll be going through Google Tag Manager and the way to get there. Well, the way I get there is Tag Manager. Just in the Google Chrome search bar, I click on this link here, which is tagmanager.google.com. Okay, this brings me to all the accounts that are associated with my Gmail account or email account, whichever it is. For me, it's my Gmail account. Now I'm gonna click on my demo account. Um, oh, I believe it's this one here. This is my demo account. Then it brings me into the demo accounts container. So this is the main workspace. It's just an overview area. It tells you the various ways you can navigate GTM. You can create a new tag. You can show, uh, it, it can show you what you've, what you've been editing, what, what modifications have been made to the container since the last time it was published. In this case, none. You can show, it can show you here, uh, which version has been published. You can write a description if you need to, but right now it just shows you that no changes have been made since the last publish. Over here on the left, underneath overview, you see tags. Here it'll show you all the tags that you've created. It'll also show you the type of tag, the way the tag fires. So what are the triggers that fire each tag? For example, look at this one here. This is a Google Ads remarketing tag that I've created. It tells you the type of it, Google Ads remarketing. And it also tells you here that it fires on all pages. This last column shows you when it was either created or when it was edited specifically, right? So in the case of this Google Ads remarketing tag, it was edited, it was last edited four days ago. Even if it was created four days ago, it will still say last edited four days ago. Let's go through the process of creating a tag just for the purpose of this demo, right? So we go over here, we click new. We can name it something. We'll just call it demo. Uh, test remarketing tag, right? That's our, this is where we add our title. Over here in this area, tag configuration, we'll, we'll click this. And then here's where you can add any tag template, right? So the list starts from the older universal analytics to the newer GA4 configuration tag to being able to add a GA4 event tag. You can see here there's also third party or what I mean by third party is non-Google tags that you can add. So folks like AdRoll and Crazy Eggs, Crazy Eggs, it's not plural, Crazy Egg have created their own tag template here and you can add their details. And you don't have to add any kind of code to these tag templates. You can actually just add the variables that they're looking for. Okay. Distillery, Universal, Pixel, Fox, Metrics, all of these can be added here. Odometry. But for this purpose, right, we're just going to create a remarketing tag. And like I said, a traditional remarketing tag or a traditional tag will be a block of JavaScript, about yay big. When you look at these tag templates, that block of JavaScript is already embedded. It's kept up to date because of the various tag templates in the tag gallery that we were just looking at. For the sake of this remarketing tag, imagine you have code, it looks like this, and then you have variables that can be set for the unique aspects of that block of code. So in this case, you have a variable that needs to be filled in for a conversion ID, and you'll grab that from your Google Ads account. So you'll go to settings, audience manager, and then I believe it's on the left, your data sources. And then you'll click on uh, at the bottom of the screen, implement using Google Tag Manager. And then you can grab the conversion ID from Google Ads. 
you can add it here to the conversion ID section. Once you've done that, the Google Ads remarketing tag knows that it belongs to a specific Google Ads account. I've just added a random one here, just a bunch of zeros, just to show you what creating a tag looks like in GTM. At the bottom here, we create a trigger. So how do we want this particular remarketing tag to fire? We click here. All pages is an example of how you can fire a remarketing tag, or you could click here and create a new trigger. So imagine, for the sake of argument, contact us. We want to create it. The beauty of GTM is it's implemented on all pages. So you have flexibility to create triggers on every one of your pages. So if we want to create a trigger for contact us, just for the sake of the demo, we click here on page view. And then we click on not all pages, because that would just be like before, but we'll click on some pages to differentiate one page over another. And then in this drop down, we'll see page URL. Right, so page URL contains, let's say, contact us, that kind of thing. And now this particular remarketing tag, even though this use case doesn't make a lot of sense, I'm just showing you that with the flexibility of Google Tag Manager being on every page, you can actually specify how tags are fired without needing to bother a developer to tag a specific page. You can actually segment one page um, you know, out of all the pages if you want to, in this case, the contact us page and you click on save. Now you've got this cool preview mode where if you went to that page, you could see if the, if, if the tag is actually triggered or not. And if it's not, you can debug from there and adjust your trigger. Okay, but if it is working, then that's a successful implementation. Okay. So we've gone over the overview section, which tells you what has been changed since the last publish. I mean, you can see here that when we first looked at it, there weren't any workspace changes since the last publish. But what did we do just now? We created a remarketing tag and we created a trigger called contact us. So these were the changes that we just made. And it's put, it's sort of posting these in the overview section. See? Workspace changes to added. And we can go ahead and hit submit. If we're happy with those changes, we can also look at history if we like as well. So overview tags, we looked at that triggers. This sort of will tell you how you can fire or execute your tags, or you can go to variables. This is a new section that we haven't talked about yet. But variables are things like page URL, right? So we just use page URL in this particular trigger. So in this case, it's an event. It's saying it's executing JavaScript code that is, that is looking for a URL. For example, uh, we go to google.com page URL, go to inspect actually executing this code. It's executing document.url. And then it's when we say document.url contains contact us, it's doing a regex to find the word contact us inside document.url. So there's more code that you can write to actually find certain elements of the URL. But with GTM, there's no coding that is necessary. The variables section will actually do all this coding for you. So it's really nice. Where's page URL right here. So there it is. Variable type is a URL component type full URL. So, so what it's doing is it's executing code for you. So in our case, like I said, it's actually just looking for a URL and it's grabbing a specific element of it. Okay. And there's various other different types form URL. So it's looking for the URL from a form. So a form submit here, it's looking for the class of a form. 
So these behave in a similar way. It's just executing JavaScript to find things on the page. The click URL, when a button is clicked, what is the URL of that click? And then you can execute tags based on these things, on these variables. So it's executing code to help you execute tags. All right. And you can organize GTM into folders and things like that. You can, you can uh, search the gallery for various tag templates. So these are kind of user generated, company generated from uh, larger companies. Like, you know, we saw, we saw Domitry, we saw uh, Crazy Eggs, as I called it. But uh, there's a few others as well. And, and people create them. Some are official, some aren't. Uh, but you can also create your own. Okay, so that's a quick overview of GTM. Oh, maybe before we go over at the top here, you see an admin section. So there's a lot you can do from a user management perspective as well in GTM. You can add users, you can give them all sorts of different types of user privileges and permissions, read, write, execute, and admin. And then you can export your container if you want to, uh, you know, create a new container. You can you can import it as well, that kind of thing. You can see what kind of uh, things are waiting for you to be approved. You can look at the activity from your various users. There's a lot you can do from an admin perspective. Okay, that concludes today's video. And thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye.